inspired by this song. So hard to be, I almost gave up when you showed up and brought some sense to my mind. Exactly the right time, so I'm gonna hold down, stay strong, I'm gonna fight till the end. I, I'm gonna hold down, I'm gonna stay strong, I'm gonna fight till the end, end of time. Till the end of time, but da 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 da. Till the end of time, da da da. Sometimes I sit down with my pen and paper. I'm trying to write a song, but ten minutes later, I'm still at the place where I started to think about my issues, what I've been through emotionally, financially. I am struggling, there's help in. I stay strong, I'm gonna fight till the end I'm gonna hold on, I'm gonna stay strong I'm gonna fight till the end, end of time but, Till the end of time, but, but, uh, 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 till the end of time Jesus, see what I want to be Christian. 
Thank you. 
he was like a friend of one of the guys in the group, his brother, if you guys can follow me. But he came to he came to our house where we would make our beats and make our songs. And he was like, you know, I heard about you guys, you know, I want to see what you got. So we performed for him right there in the living room. And like he fell in love with like our group. And he's like, you know what I'm gonna do? So I want you guys to come rap at this club. I'm gonna give y'all a chance to, to rap at this club. And you know, in the area where I was from was about an hour away. And he's like, this was a, a huge deal. You know, he was like, you guys do a good job at the show, I'll maybe see if I can get you guys a record deal. So you know, like, you talk about the 17, 18 year olds that, like, we were, like, super excited. <laughs> like, I remember we sat on the front porch and we were like, man, like, I'm gonna get bins, I'm gonna get big house. Like, we were already dreaming, we hadn't made nothing, you know? <laughs> but, uh, so, like, you know, he was like, I want you guys to go to the studio. This was Tuesday, and the show was supposed to be Thursday. Um, so he was like, I want you guys to go to the studio tomorrow, record the song. There's one particular song he wanted us to perform. Record the song and make a performance track. So, so we had planned it out the next day. I came home and I told, I told my parents. I was like, because um, you know, I, I, I couldn't get into the club unless they allowed me to, because I wasn't going to get into the club. Um, so I was like, um, Mom, Dad, y'all know how to rap, right? He was like, I guess, yeah. Um, well, we got this opportunity to go to this club and do a show. Depending on how we do, we make it a record deal. They're like, hold on, hold on, slow down. What do you mean go to a club? You're not even old enough to get in the club. I was like, well, you know, the guy's supposed to escort us and give us wristbands so they know we're under age. Um, and he said, you know, they said, uh, and what are you rapping about? Like, so I'm like, um, <laughs> uh, stuff. You know, like, they said, well, and it's like, let us hear some of your rap. So I had to think of the cleanest rap I had. Because like, almost every rap I had literally had Chris Burns in it. Um, so I had to think of like a clean version of any of my songs, which I don't know if I had maybe one. And um, he said, well, you know what? We don't really like the idea of you going to the club and doing all this. And, you know, but he said, you know what? We want you to pray about it and ask God what he wants you to do. So first of all, I'm not like, I had no desire for God. Even though I went to church every Sunday, I had no desire for God at all. Like, second of all, I didn't even know like, how to hear from God. So I asked him, I said, well, if I pray, how, how will I know like, what God is saying? Like, how will I know if he's speaking to me? He said, you'll know. You'll know. I said, all right. So I went to my room, and like, I, I didn't get, give it any thought. Like, I had made up my mind. I'm going to do this anyway. I don't care what they say. Like, I didn't pray. Honestly, I never prayed. And like an hour later, they called me back into their room. I was like, you know what? God is like, no. This is this is a trap. It's like, this is a trap for, for Satan to snatch your soul. Like, and then they said, but you know what? You're you're out of high school now. We want you to start making decisions for yourself. So we want we want you to pray and ask God. So I said, all right, you know. And I still did pray. But it's it's so funny because God, like, God can still get a hold of you, even though you're trying to run from him. And like at that point in my life, I was trying to run from God. I was trying to get away from him. And I remember even I had got accepted to a Christian college. And I didn't, it's funny, I didn't know it was a Christian college. I just applied to the college. And I went to visit. Um, this was a few weeks before all this happened, but it was just showing me things that God was doing. I went to visit it and like me and me and my boy were like, man, this is a Christian school. Like, we're not going here. Like, we're going to corrupt the school. And it was funny, like, I was trying to get away from God, but he was still, like, trying to get my attention. So, um, so the Wednesday came, the studio session just failed, like, I don't know what happened. We couldn't get the studio session, so therefore the, the show was canceled, and we tried to plan it for next week. On top of that, my whole group, it was like five of us in a group, but then we had, like, a little entourage, a clique of guys that, you know, that, that would roll with us. Like, they, they all went and got these shirts that said live rounds. And on the back, they had a member that represented a gun, like a 22 or 9 or 45. And like, somehow, I got left out. So they, everybody had t-shirts, and like, I got left out. I was in the group, and guys that weren't even in the group had t-shirts. I was like, how did y'all leave me out? Like, and then I was going to get a shirt, but like, there's not even any guns left. Like, they had took all the numbers of guns, at least the ones that we knew, you know, and... 
So, you know, I came home and told my mom, I was like, Mom, this is crazy. Like, like the show got canceled, we could do a studio session. Like, they would have got shirts without me. She's like, see, that's a sign from God. Like, Mom, whatever, like, that's, whatever, it's just not happening. Like, I couldn't see that, like, things were starting to happen and God was trying to pull me away from this. And so, Saturday came, and I'm riding down the road, and I see, uh, well, just to give you a little bit, before before I, I came to England, I was in a rap group, and I was in a group with one other guy. So, I'm riding down the road, and I see this guy talking. And this is the guy that I went to high school with. He graduated a year before me. So I hadn't seen him in a while. But I had I started rapping with him when I was like 19th grade. And he kind of really helped me a lot and you know, coached me as far as rapping and stuff. And he was like at least about 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes driving wise from his home. So he had he had jogged a long way. Now I was driving, America was driving on the right side of the road. So I was driving. And he was jogging on this side. Like, so he was on the wrong side of the road. But somehow I still noticed him. And like, don't ask me why. <laughs> I pulled up the side of him like, yo, you want to ride? And he was like, yeah. So he's out jogging, but he's like, you want to ride? So this, it's weird. It's weird. But this is, this is how God did it. So he gets in the car. And we just kind of catch it up. And I was like, yeah, man, we got the group, man. You know, we about to do the show. We about to blow up, man. Like, you know, you should hop in the group. If we blow up, I want you to blow up, you know. And he was like, nah, man, that's okay. I was like, what do you mean? He's like, well, I, he said, man, I, I've been going to church. I gave my life to God. And he's like, honestly, I'm thinking about doing gospel rap. And I was like, what? Like, gospel rap? What is that? You know, like, to me, it was unheard of. Like, I don't know, how many of you guys heard of Kirk Franklin? Like, he's, a, he's a great gospel artist. But, like, I thought gospel rap was like Kirk Franklin trying to rap. You know, I was like, you know, like, and that's no this to him. Like, Kirk Franklin will tell you he's not a rapper, you know. And it's just like, I thought that's what gospel rap was. I didn't know that, you know, there was rappers that really rap for God, you know. And, and at the time, I had, like, the, the popular um, radio station on in my car. And he's like, stuff like that. And I don't even listen to that anymore. And I was like, what? Is that serious? You know. And he's like, yeah. So I asked him, I said, well, what? I said, what inspires you? Like, what made you come to God? And he was just like, well, he said, I went to go hear this, uh, this preacher. He said, uh, Mace, he used to be a rapper. Now, some of you are probably way too young to know who Mace is, but um, Mace was this very popular rapper in like, the mid-90s. And he, uh, he left rapping, like, he quit rapping. Um, supposedly became a, a preacher, a pastor. I mean, that's kind of a crazy story because I don't know where he is now. But, um, but at the time, in, you know, at that time in his life, I, you know, I, I do believe genuinely God did get a hold of him. I don't know if he, you know, was brought up in the wrong upbringing or whatever. But um, so he was like, I want to go hear Mace preach. He's like, I had to see this for myself. Like, this guy left all this money, all this fame, you know, for God. And he was like, so I asked him, I was like, what was he preaching about? He said he was preaching about how the rap game is just a trap. He said, how is this just a trap? You know, for Satan to snatch your soul. I was like, oh. I was like, man, that's the same thing that my parents told me when they prayed. And I was like, wow, this is crazy. So at that moment, like, I knew that God was speaking to me. I was like, okay, God, like, now I know how you can speak. You know, you can speak through people. And before I knew it, I came out of my mouth. I was like, you know what? I might try this gospel rap with you. He was like, well, okay. He's like, well, give me a call. So I came home and I just told my mom, I was like, mom, this is real crazy. Like, I ran into, I ran into Kirk and then we just started talking and like, he gave his life to God and he's doing gospel rap. And I was like, I'm doing it with you. <laughs> you know, and, like, I hadn't even, like, given my life to God. And I was just like, it just came out of my mouth. I was like, mom, but, you know, don't make me go in front of the church on Sunday, you know, and I share a testimony or anything. She's like, okay, all right, that's okay. So Sunday at church, she, she got up there and she tried to kind of share the testimony of what was going on. And like she got like two or three words out. She just started bawling. It's like, my, my son, you just know. Like, oh. like, so my pastor looked at me and called me up there. And um, you know, he was just like, you know, he's like, you ready? I was like, I'm ready. And like before I know it, I just broke down and like I fell to my knees and I just started crying out to God. Like, 
And it's funny because I don't remember him praying for me. I just remember falling on my knees and just like crying out to God. Like, and for the first time I felt, first I felt like the burden of sin. First time I felt that, like, man, I thought all this time me going to church, I was like in good standing with God. I thought I was okay. But for the first time I felt like guilty. I felt like, man, had I died, like the way I was living, I would went to hell. Like, and then instantly I felt like the burden lifted and I felt free. And like my tears of sorrow, my tears of guilt became like tears of joy. And like, you know, at that moment I just gave my heart to God. And I was 17 years old. You know, fresh out of high school. And I thought we were actually things like when my stepdad had said, like, you know, I soon you're no longer gonna have a desire for this rap music. Three months later it happened. You know, it's just like, wow, like God is real. And that's what I want to share with all of you tonight. That God is real. Like, this, this is not like a myth. This is not something you just read in a book. Like, God is real. And he's tangible. Like, and he's here tonight. The Bible says when two or three are gathering in his name, he's in the midst. So God is here tonight. And I just want to, want to say to everybody here tonight, from the youngest to the oldest, if you don't know God, and when I say if you don't know God, like, if you don't have a relationship with God, if you haven't come to, to Jesus and said, forgive me of my sin, I repent of my sin, I turn away from my sin. And you might even think, like, what is sin? Sin is just breaking God's law. Sin is, is anything that is against what God wants for us. God wants, God wants perfection. We can't, we can't live a perfect life, but God wants perfection. Sin is lying, it's cheating, it's stealing, it's, it's looking with lust, it's all of those things. And some of you might say, you know, well, I'm not really a sinner, you know. I do some bad things, but the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. It's like all of us are guilty. So that's the, the first step is just acknowledging that, man, I'm a sinner. Like, I stand before God and I'm guilty. If you were standing in the courtroom, you'd be guilty of your, of your, your sin. You'd be guilty and you'd be judged to hell. I know that's hard to swallow. A lot of people don't want to talk about that. A lot of people don't want to hear that, but that's the truth. I'd rather tell you the truth than you leave here and, and, and get your life right with God than not tell you the truth. And you leave here, you get an accident, and you die, and you never had that chance to hear the truth. So, with all that being said, um, I just want to take a quick opportunity. Um, if we can have, just have everybody close their eyes. Just close their eyes. And if you're here tonight and you're saying, you know what? What you're saying is making sense. For the first time, it's making sense about who God is and that he's real and that I'm a sinner and that I stand before him guilty. And if I die in my sins, then I will not make it to heaven. If that's you tonight and you want a relationship with God, I just want you to start praying right now. Just start praying. Just ask God for forgiveness. Just start talking to him. There's no, there's no particular way to do it. Just start praying. We'll take a, a moment. And do not be ashamed. Don't worry about other people. Because that's one of the things that holds us back so much from God is other people. And maybe maybe you might not feel comfortable doing that right now, but I want to take this opportunity because I don't want to miss the opportunity. But if you don't feel comfortable doing that right now, I, I encourage you to go home tonight. Like when you're all alone, you lay down and just pray and give your life to God. Do not hesitate. Sometimes we look for all the answers, but it's not about answers. God gives us enough. He, he's shown enough proof that he's real, that he exists. So if there's anybody here tonight, just right now where you want to start praying. You don't have to be loud, you don't have to be soft. However you feel it, however God is, is telling you to do it. I don't want you to leave here without having this opportunity to give your life to Jesus tonight. Maybe some people here tonight that, you know, say, well, you know what, I, I kind of did this before, you know, I gave my life to God, but it didn't really work out, you know, like, I started, you know, living a lifestyle that wasn't what God wanted, and I don't know why you may have done it, I, I can't answer that for you, everybody, you know, is different, sometimes it happens, but if that's you tonight, and you say, you know what, like, I've kind of backslid, I need to get back in line with God, if that's you, I want you to start crying out to God and start praying tonight. Saying, God, you know, I want to be back in that place where I was before when, when, when I wasn't ashamed of you, when I was sharing you with, with my 
neighbors, my friends, with everyone that I came in contact with. If that's you, I want you to just start praying and crying out to God. And I got one last song. Um, this song is called You Save Me. Um, so I said all that basically kind of, to kind of set up this song. Alright, you go ahead.
Research. Thank you very much. Refreshments in the back. God bless. 